Hi, and welcome back uh, to my channel. So, in the previous episode, number 12, uh, we used the uh, directional coupler by Mini Circuits um, to, to check out uh, the reflection caused by uh, filters, uh, filters made out of uh, capacitors and inductors. By the way, my camera here is not good enough to, to show you the details, but uh, the, the um, directional coupler I used is, uh, the, is uh, this model from uh, Mini Circuits. And so, as we saw in the previous video, video is it has these uh, minus almost minus twenty dB of uh, attenuation in the in its uh, coupled port. Okay, so uh, one application, of course, for uh, this thing is also could also be to to study the the output of a transmitter that we might use. For example, here I have this uh, Baofeng radio. And you know there are some, uh, or there are actually a lot of discussion on the web if these are good, if they emit uh, a good signal or not. Uh, so it would be nice to verify the quality of this signal as we did for the RKRF uh, using a spectrum analyzer or an oscilloscope. So the idea here would be, uh, you know, to um, remove the antenna of the Baofeng, uh, insert uh, the uh, directional coupler this way, on having the antenna here, and the couple port, which has minus 20 dB reduction in, in power, will go to the um, uh, spectrum analyzer or to the uh, oscilloscope. The fact, of course, is that I cannot connect uh, directly the, the Baofeng or any um, transmitter with some wattage uh, to these instruments because they, uh, it, the, the, these are not designed to absorb uh, much power, so this would just destroy them. So we need a, a coupler to do that. The only problem with this uh, coupler uh, from mini circuits is that, unfortunately, it's just not rated for uh, so much power. So if we go in the data sheet, uh, uh, we can see that, um, where is it here, the power input uh, cannot, uh, so that the minimum specification is 1.5 watts, okay? So the Baofeng here, when, uh, when used with um, um, the Baofeng, when used with uh, the maximum power, can output almost uh, 5 watts. So this would probably just destroy this, uh, this thing, and of course I don't want to do that. So, um, in order to, to do, to observe the, the behavior of my Baofeng or even the, the behavior of my YAKRF once I get an amplifier to amplify its signal, um, I built this uh, device here. So it's still not completely finished, but uh, you see it's uh, just a simple metal aluminum box with a free BNC connector and some connections here. So uh, this uh, design, I mean, what, uh, what I built is just uh, what uh, um, uh, I found on this uh, YouTube channel. So I already mentioned at the end of my previous video how uh, great this channel is. Uh, and uh, in particular in, uh, in um, episode 7, he explained uh, how to build this, um, uh, this box that I just showed you uh, to indeed sample, reduce uh, the energy from a, uh, from a transmitter to observe it with uh, your oscilloscope. Okay? Um, so, uh, since uh, I, uh, my camera is not good enough to show you precisely the internals of this, uh, uh, you know, you cannot see it uh, properly, I drew just a little schematics here that uh, you can see now. And um, so the idea is that we have our emitter, uh, so this uh, object here, usually a 50 ohm emitter, just like the Baofeng or uh, the AKRF with some. Uh, amplification or basically any radio okay so they emit uh, at uh, with a 50 ohm impedance we have an intended output this could be a dummy load could be a tuned antenna which has a 50 uh, ohm impedance as well okay and so the idea is that we just uh, connect to their uh, um, direct connection and uh, we use this uh, additional wire to implement a voltage divider okay so in this case, I have uh, put in my box a 50 kilo ohm uh, resistor and a 5 kilo ohm resistor. So this will generate here voltage, which is about one tenth of the voltage here. So I'm reducing the voltage uh, emitted by the emitter by 10 times. Okay, and then uh, using the BSC uh, port, I'm going to connect this reduced output uh, to my oscilloscope. Okay, and remember that the oscilloscope has one mega ohm uh, uh, internal impedance, not 50 ohm, generally speaking. 
So I'm making this video because um, um, let me see um, because uh, uh, in his uh, video W2AEW says that it's not so much important uh, which uh, resistor uh, you get as long as their ratio is the number of uh, the reduction you you have. So in my case is um, it's uh, it's the ratio is 50, so we get about a tenfold uh, uh, decrease in, uh, in voltage. Uh, however, I discover, I mean, this is the case indeed, but I want to discuss uh, some of the details because uh, it's important to understand. I mean, it was important for me, so I spent actually the afternoon understanding properly this. So here I have uh, this setup, I have uh, my box. Uh, so this oscilloscope is quite nice because it also has a, it also has a, um, a simple signal generator. So from this output port, uh, which is a 50 ohm port, I'm emitting at the moment a 10 kilohertz uh, signal. The signal is going uh, to the input of uh, uh, my, my metal box here. And uh, this input is directly connected uh, to uh, this uh, uh, output port, okay? So this corresponds to the... Uh, this direct line here, this direct connection from emitter to output. And, um, okay, so this output is going to channel one of the oscilloscope. This is uh, instead the coupled port, um, so uh, it corresponds to this point here in the, in the schematics. And it's going to um, channel two of my oscilloscope. Now you can see this is already running, so uh, the oscilloscope is emitting uh, the signal as 10 kilohertz. The signal is arriving here. The moment here I have two volts per division. And uh, here instead I have, uh, on channel two, I have uh, 0.5 volts per division. So uh, if I put it 0.2 volts per division, uh, which is exactly one tenth of um, the value here, we get that the two signals are exactly the same or more or less the same. So this means indeed that uh, the coupled port here is uh, sending out one tenth of the voltage of uh, compared to the original uh, uh, signal, okay? So the signal arriving here is 10 times stronger in terms of voltage than what is uh, arriving here from the coupled port. So this is great, uh, but, um, and it works very well for, uh, with the oscilloscope. But then if I want to, to connect uh, this output to the spectrum analyzer, for example, to, to see the, the spectrum, if there is some noise, harmonics, and these type of things, uh, things are not, uh, I discover, not working very well. And uh, so let me show why. So I'm simulating a 50 ohm connection using this uh, T with a 50 ohm dummy load, as I already explained in this uh, um, in, another, in another video. So effectively now this port, uh, this uh, channel of my oscilloscope, uh, if I manage to connect it uh, right there, uh, has a 50 ohm impedance, not a mega ohm impedance um, as before. And I'll do the same also for this port here. Right, and uh, I'm connecting and there we go. So now something has happened here. Our signal here is uh, still uh, visible. But what about our second signal? It completely disappeared. So wh wh what happened to it? And so what happened after a, a long uh, process of try, uh, of, um, you know, of uh, searching for mistakes and these kind of things, is not so, so difficult to understand. So uh, the fact is that um, uh, when we do this uh, modification, so we have our 50 ohm, uh, uh, I mean, we, we have uh, the scope with these 50 ohm adapters. Effectively, it's like uh, we are having, uh, instead of one mega ohm, here, 50 ohm, right? So this means that now the uh, overall uh, um, impedance of this part of, uh, of the, um, I mean, the overall impedance, I should say, of this part, well, it's the same, is not anymore about 50 kilo ohm as before. Uh, it is 50 kilo ohm in parallel with 50 ohm, which is actually very close to 50 ohm, okay? So let me try to write it here. So 50 ohm in parallel with uh, 50 kilo ohm is almost equal, it's actually uh, something like 49 ohm, right? 
instead the 50 kilo ohm in parallel with one mega ohm was basically five kilo ohm so the one mega ohm of the oscilloscope was so large then it didn't really affect this uh, five kilo ohm but the 50 ohm is affecting it a lot in fact uh, we get about 49 uh, ohm so it means now that we have a ratio between 50 kilo ohm and about 50 ohm which is one uh, uh, thousand of uh, uh, the ratio is one uh, thousand it's not anymore uh, 10 as before and so we get completely different results so this signal now on channel uh, 2 so let me show you back uh, the signal now on uh, on channel 2 is not just 10 times uh, smaller in terms of voltage but it is one times uh, one uh, 1000 times smaller so let me see if i can uh, do that uh, show you that so here i'm setting for channel 1 uh, so first of all i'm increasing uh, as much as possible the amplitude of my original signal and here okay so here i have uh, uh, let's see i have uh, um, yeah, so here I have uh, 5 volts per division now. So this is the signal with the maximal, uh, I mean, 5 volts per division on, on channel 1, okay? So just this signal. Instead here on channel 2, I'm going to reduce as much as possible the signal. So let's see the dual anymore uh, again. So now I'm just showing signal 2. And you see that it's there. And channel 1 is uh, uh, this, uh, uh, so let me see, both of them. So channel 1 now is the larger. And it has two volts per division now it has one volt and now it has two volts again okay here we have uh, five millivolts now five millivolts this this scope has the possi possibility of a five time magnification so if i click this button or actually i pull i will get uh, to one millivolt um, and if i put here one volt we get it to uh, uh, we, the two signals are uh, exactly the same. So indeed, uh, what is arriving here is one times in terms of voltage more than what is coming to the coupled port. So actually, you see that um, the, the type of uh, resistor uh, you choose, uh, uh, it's not only the ratio that uh, is important, but it's actually the value that you put here on the bottom, this 5 kilo ohm, is, is kind of important, uh, or, or what you put at the top because it, it will determine a different uh, reduction uh, in, the si uh, in the size of the signal when you apply the 50 ohm, uh, I mean 50 ohm uh, things like for example a uh, spectrum analyzer or the HRF used as a spectrum analyzer or an SDR and this type of thing so it's just uh, useful um, to know that and um, so this is all about uh, the oscilloscope I will now show you what happens on the spectrum analyzer Okay, so I've just uh, set up things uh, with the uh, spectral analyzer. As you can see, I just turned off uh, the oscilloscope now. And um, so what I'm doing now, I'm uh, sweeping, uh, as you can see. Uh, so let me turn off uh, the, the tracking generator for a second. So the spectral analyzer is sweeping from 1 megahertz to 500 megahertz. The output of the track, uh, track, tracking generator, so this thing that's basically a signal generator that is sweeping from uh, 1 to 500 megahertz, is going to the input port of uh, my box. In the output, in the main output port, which is directly connected to the input, I have a 50 ohm uh, load. And the coupled port, so this uh, reduced energy port, is going uh, directly to the input of uh, the spectrum analyzer. So I'm going now to activate uh, the, um, the tracking generator at a power of uh, minus uh, 10 dBm. So let me do that. And this is the response. So uh, let's try to understand what's going on. So at a very low frequency, around 10 megahertz here, that after we will uh, maybe zoom in, um, we get around minus 60 dBm of uh, attenuation and uh, increasing with frequency generally speaking the, um, the energy increases uh, remember that uh, the tracking generator is uh, outputting um, a constant signal here where the line is okay at minus uh, 10 dBm um, minus 10 let's see yeah exactly so this signal that we have uh, in, uh, in the input port of the uh, spectrum analyzer is indeed uh, quite attenuated compared to the original, okay? 
So, uh, but it's not uh, uh, attenuated. So an attenuation of 1000 times in power would mean a 30 dB, okay? But here we see a stronger attenuation than 30 dB. Here we are at uh, fi minus 50, 50 dB down, okay? Compare 52, 53, compared to the minus 10 uh, of the origin. And this is because the attenuation was uh, 1000 times uh, in, at the level of voltage, but the power has to be taken as the square of that. So really we have uh, 1000 uh, square attenuation at the level of power, and this is about uh, 60, 60 dBs. So the attenuation, however, decreases uh, uh, while increasing the frequencies. And I think it's because uh, here I used um, uh, for as a resistor, uh, metal film uh, resistors. Okay, so this is the only thing I had uh, in my, uh, available with me. And so this is in general not uh, the best idea with RF because uh, these resistors act uh, a little bit as capacitors and uh, they also have some inductance. So at high frequencies, they lose their resistive, uh, let's say, specification and they become, uh, their impedance becomes less of that, uh, of the resistance specified as DC. So it's kind of uh, expected to see this behavior, uh, but still it's uh, pretty good. So uh, for the HF, meaning around 14 megahertz, the attenuation is uh, 50 dB. So it's perfectly fine, for example, to to input here 10 watts or even 20 watts and uh, read the output directly to the spectrum analyzer, I think. And uh, But even at, uh, let's say, 100 and, uh, and 44, so in VHF, uh, the attenuation is around, uh, you see, we, we, we see minus 50 dBm, so it's uh, over 40 dB attenuation, which means uh, 10,000 times less power. So that's also very fine for checking, uh, for example, the Baofeng, the Baofeng on VHF and lastly also here on 440 which is the UHF uh, it's it's uh, good enough so we have more than 30 dB attenuation and uh, that should allow for a safe uh, measurement of course this is all a bit shaky you know it's not uh, this box is not something I trust too much uh, uh, especially for this uh, unclear behavior of these components at high frequencies and uh, anyway uh, now uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, seal uh, the box, uh, we'll make sure that it's kind of a permanent uh, thing and uh, I will use it uh, in uh, more experiments in the future. So thank you very much and if you have any, any useful comment please leave them uh, in, the section, uh, in, the, in the comment section below. Bye!